The following video is brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For grip panels and M-Lock accessories, please visit slateblackindustries.com. Aber bitte refrain from screwing M-Lock accessories onto your classic Karabiner Akto 90 Scharfschützengewehr. Welcome back to Nine Hole Reviews. In this episode, we explore the very iconic sniper variant of the Car 98K, and we also attempt to find out how well a newly accurized Car 98K sniper rifle can shoot. I think there was an impact. And push its limits as far as we can. The Karabiner Akto 90 Schaffschützengewehr has a very complicated lineage to dissect. For research, we drew very heavily on technical data from Peter Zenix. The German Sniper, 1914-1945, and Albrecht Wacker's biography on Josef Sepp Alleberger, the sniper on the Eastern Front as primary accounts. Military doctrine typically has the most influence on the development of weapons. Germany emerged from World War I as one of the pioneers of employing snipers. But as World War II started, the German Wehrmacht had abandoned a lot of its sniper doctrine and placed greater importance towards mechanization. It was actually the Waffen SS that had placed a large order on high powered rifles with telescopic sights even in 1939. The SS did not get along with the Heer, a German army, and was unable to use official procurement channels. These early SS sniper rifles ranged anything from reworked World War I Gewehr 98s to Polish Radom Mausers. It was not until 1943 when the Wehrmacht had massive sufferings from Soviet snipers, that more importance was placed upon the German army sniper. And as such, the German Car 98K sniper rifle configurations changed along with the wartime development of the Car 98 rifle itself. Typically, the ZF-39 style scopes were the most popular and frequently seen on sniper variant 98Ks. These came in the 4x Ziel 4, the 6x Ziel 6, and the rare 8x Ziel Acht. It is well noted that the scope clarity was one of the main reasons why German snipers preferred the 98K sniper rifles over Mosinagant sniper variants. However, there are some cases where unit armorers did manage to use captured Soviet equipment on hand to make field sniper rifles. Some smaller ZF-41 1.5x scopes were also used, although typically snipers did not prefer the decreased field of view. The ZF-39 style scope mounting systems also changed throughout the progression of the war. Typical Wehrmacht snipers had short side rails, turret mounts, claw mounts, or long side rails. Whereas the SS also used a double claw mount and others, since they did not share the procurement channels with the Wehrmacht. Unlike other nations of the era, German snipers were actually issued precision-loaded sniper ammunition. The 198-grain bow-tailed Schwere Spitzgeschoss sniper projectile has a 594G1 ballistic coefficient, traveling at about 2550 feet per second. As a comparison, the current US-issued M118LR sniper cartridge uses a 175-grain Sierra Match King projectile with a 505G1 ballistic coefficient at 2850 feet per second. This means that the World War II German sniper projectile is actually significantly more aerodynamic than the modern US standard sniper projectile. In fact, sniper Matthias Hitzenauer cleared the longest confirmed kill of World War II at 1.1 km with his Car 98K and a 6x Zeiss scope. Eastern Front marksmen also use the infamous Beobachtung or Bepatronen a high explosive aircraft observation round. There are recorded accounts of snipers sending high explosive rounds into wooden shacks to set fire and flush out enemy combatants and subsequently pick them off as they flee. The Germans even had developed suppressed Car 90K sniper rifles with subsonic ammunition. Our objective is to see how a newly produced Car 98K of the era with a comparable scope and stock bedding would do. So we set out to find a nearly unissued early post-war Czech Car 98K. These early post-war examples were wartime production German standard Wehrmacht Car 98K rifles with a DOU code, which stood for Waffenwerks Brünn, what we know today as a Czech Brno factory. 
however all German markings were scrubbed off after World War II. The rifle was manufactured to Wehrmacht specs and had pristine bores, but do not have collectabilities as true World War II issued rifles, making it a perfect donor rifle. I also found an Optico Tecna ZF39 copy with a short side rail mount. Although the preferred mid to late war method for the ZF39 scope is a closed ring turret mount, we paired the early war short side rail with a late war Car 98K with a stamped barrel band because I was unsure if the grounded down receiver would affect the mounting geometry. We sent the rifle and parts off to a US cab officer turns gunsmith, Mike Kramer, to complete the bedding and conversion of the rifle. So I'm fitting the new butt plate to the stock. Um, the old butt plate was a lot taller and larger so wood had to be removed from the sides all the way around as well as the, the back face of the stock and to do that so you're not just cutting wherever we use inlaying black this black clever ink stuff on the inside of the part we fit the part on and remove the part and cut away the black. It's tedious, but that's the right way to do it. And it returned with a full sniper conversion. We now have a rifle that would give us a very good idea on what a German sniper would have been freshly issued to march off to the Eastern Front with. We loaded up some nozzle 200 grain Botel hollow point projectiles to meet the 25-50 feet per second mark and set off to see what this rifle could do at 100 yards. We observed two 9 shots groupings from this rifle, measuring at 1.6 MOA and 1.53 MOA. For the second grouping, we cut the target into a 140mm by 80mm square, roughly the size of an iPhone. This square represented the maximum group size for any Car 98K to enter the sniper rifle program. Once a rifle was accurized, the German army required the sniper rifles to group 5 shots into a 105mm or 4.1 MOA circle, of which 3 out of 5 shots must lie within a 70mm or 2.8 MOA centre of the grouping. The Wehrmacht Infantry School noted in a report on March 1945 that tested Car 98K sniper rifles put out groupings measuring from 2.5 to 6.6 .6 MOA when shot at 1 km with 12 shot groups. This means that our sniper rifle and ammunition combination shooting 9 shots at 1.5 MOA would have been an exceptionally accurate sniper variant from the World War II era. We believe that the recoil coupled with the worsened ergonomics of a scoped Car 98K were points that decreased the rifle's combat effectiveness. One of the Wehrmacht's most successful snipers with 257 confirmed kills, Josef Sepp Alleberger, also explains that the Car 98K's recoil meant that most Wehrmacht conscripts actually scored very few combat hits with it, and even seasoned veterans would shy away from shooting more than 30 to 40 full powered 7.92mm cartridge out of the bolt action rifle in one sitting. The extra weight of the Car 98K sniper scope and mount did dampen the recoil but there is still significantly more than our contemporary rifles of the era. The Wehrmacht required high scope mounting to accommodate the usage of iron sights. This was a common practice for rifles of the era, as iron sights tended to be more reliable than 1910-1940s optics. Later war issued Car 98K rifles also used laminate wood stocks, which were actually better for accuracy, since there was less stock warping from the elements. These stocks, however, were fitted with a cupped butt plate that had a collarbone cutout. The iron sight rifle, when I shoot out of it, my shoulder is on the 
proper position and it has a relief cut for my collarbone to sit into to where it doesn't jostle me around the full power 8mm cartridge. If you look at what they did with the sniper variant, it still has a sloped cup butt plate towards the later war variant. The problem is when I raise my head, the rifle requires me to reposition my shoulder a little bit. My shoulder rolls a little bit farther forward because I'm in a higher position. Now when it recoils, you see, instead of biting right underneath the collarbone with a solid 90 degree bite with my shoulder, my shoulder is arced farther forward to allow my eyes to look through the scope. That gives it a slope to when it recoils, it comes down a lot more. And the problem with that is that the scope comes close to biting my eyes with the full power 8mm cartridge. Okay. That one gave me a little bit of a, a kiss on my eye. Transitioning from the Mauser to a more modern precision rifle, you can see that there's an extra space on the cheek weld to make sure that I'm able to pin the rifle down, but then also the stock itself lends itself for me to absorb that recoil a whole lot better. When I'm shooting prone, this rifle does not slip underneath my shoulder and go into my armpit. That becomes less of an issue, say if you're firing this from a shooting position. Because all of a sudden, you see the butt plate rests firmly against my shoulder and has nowhere to slide down. It does not slide down. Or from a standing position, which is largely similar to this. That being said, if they had the option of the German Car 98K sniper variant, Alleberger and many Eastern Front Wehrmacht snipers still do not prefer to pick up the Soviet Mosin Agant sniper rifles, simply because the premium quality Zeiss and Henzold or equivalent glass outperforming Soviet scopes. It was rather the semi-automatic Soviet SVT-40 Tokarev snipers that intrigued the Germans in 1942. Even though these semi-automatic sniper rifles were less accurate than their bolt-action counterparts, the lessened recoil and faster follow-up shots meant a single sniper was even deadlier in sub-200 meter ranges, which constituted a bulk of a sniper's activities when supporting an infantry unit on the Eastern Front. Alaberger himself scored 21 kills in one sitting, wiping out more than half of a Soviet company with a G43 at sub-150 meter ranges. In our practical accuracy test, we demonstrated the Car 98K's effectiveness to clear targets one kilometer away. While this is an impressive feat for a rifle of this era, snipers in World War II usually engaged their targets under 400 meters and did not shoot on overly windy days. Remember that World War II was an era when the concept of sniper was still being developed through combat. The Car 98K sniper rifle and ammunition may be a superb long range rifle system of the day, but the heavy recoil, subpar ergonomics and slow cyclic speeds meant that it was not exactly the most ideal tool for sub 400 meter engagements. Authentic German sniper variant 98K rifles are much rarer than some other captured World War II weapons in today's antique collector market. Harsh retributions from Soviet and Allied troops or local partisans meant that any identified sniper would sooner destroy or ditch sniper rifles than they would be surrendered with them. Under no circumstances did German snipers want to be captured carrying a sniper rifle. This is why we are particularly curious in documenting the equivalent of a newly issued Car 98K sniper rifle. Well there you have it. A decent idea of what a freshly issued Car 98K sniper would do in a field with sniper ammunition. We hope to see you for the next episode of Nine Hole Reviews. Auf Wiedersehen! I would like to say thanks to our friend Mike Kramer who did the work for this spectacular looking rifle. Without him, we wouldn't have been able to attempt the Matthias Hetzenauer shot, which Mike actually kind of looks like Matthias Hetzenauer. He actually held on to that rifle for a while for some field testing, he said. Hmm. Huh.
Hallo, wie geht's, Mike? Kramer's German, isn't it? Have you been to Russia? I think we have a Facebook friend in common. Look him up. Hetzenauer. I like Lee Enfields more than Mauser's anyways. 716, this is Joe Knight 6, 4 Vic, 8 Pats, Red Con 1, Green to Green, top copy over. Joe Knight 6, this is 716, Roger over. I know I said Z, which in fact in Commonwealth English is a normal thing. 